Today we're going to be solving rational equations or solving equations that involve rational expressions on each side of the equal sign. So today what we're going to be working with is how to find the value of x when given the value of y. So you're used to maybe seeing something like this, like f of 4 equals something. That means what is the value of y when x is 4? Today we're going to be solving for the value of x when we're given the value of y. So we can, we can actually do this using two different methods. The first method is solving by graphing. And what you'll do is, for example, if you're given that f of x equals 3 and you're asked to find the value of x when y is 3, you would enter the function into y1 in your calculator. In y2, you would enter the y value, and then you would find the point of intersection. To do this algebraically, which is what we're going to be doing today, you're going to set the function equal to the y value. So you're going to replace that f of x with 3 on one side of the equal sign. Then you'll eliminate the denominator by multiplying the y value of the denom denominator. I'll show you what that looks like. Move all terms to one side and set equal to 0 factor and solve, and then you're going to check for extraneous solutions, and I'll talk about what that is. It's any answer that creates a zero in the denominator. So let's look at example number one. So the first thing we're going to do, it says f of x equals x squared plus 2x minus 6 over x plus 2, and you're asked to find x if f of x equals 3. So the first thing I'm going to do is replace f of x with 3. And we're looking for what x is when y is 3. So the first thing we need to do is get rid of that x plus 2 in the denominator. And remember, when you're solving for x, you want to isolate the x variable. So that's what we're going to be working to do here. So the first thing I'm going to do to get rid of that denominator is multiply both sides times x plus 2. When I do that, it eliminates the denominator from the right, and when I distribute this 3 into each term on the left side, I get 3x plus 6. And then I'm just going to rewrite this x squared plus 2x minus 6. And now I'm going to move all the terms to one side of the equal sign. And since I like to have an a value that's positive, I'm going to move these over to the right side. So I'm using inverse operations. What I do to the left, I need to do to the right. And notice I'm writing these terms under the terms that they are alike. Okay, so the I'm under, for example, the negative 3x or minus 3x, I'm writing it under the 2x because those are like terms. Or the minus 6, I'm writing it under the constant because it's also a constant. So that makes the left side of my equal sign 0. And then I simplify the right side, and I get x squared minus x minus 12. And now I'm going to factor this. I need two numbers that multiply to negative 12 and add to negative 1, or we're really subtracting, right? So those numbers are negative 4 and positive 3. So negative 4 and positive 3 are my factors. When I solve this, I get x equals negative 3 and positive 4 as solutions. So negative 3 and positive 4. So that means that there are two x values when the y value is 3. For example, the point negative 3, 3 is a point on this graph, and the point 4, 3 is also a point on this graph. Now you want to make sure that you check for extraneous solutions. Extraneous solutions are any solution that would create a zero in the denominator. So for example, if I plug in negative 3 in my denominator, negative 3 plus 2 is negative 1. It doesn't create a zero in the denominator. When I plug in 4 for x, 4 plus 2 is 6. That also does not create a zero in the denominator. So that works out. So let's move on to example number 2. 
Example number two says to find f x if f of x equals four. So again, I'm gonna replace f of x with four, and then I'm gonna rewrite this. Plus three x minus 10 over x plus five. And what's my first step, or second step, I guess? I need to get rid of the expression in the denominator, which is x plus five. So if I multiply the side by x plus five, that will get rid of it from the right, what I do to the right, I need to do to the left. Therefore, my, uh, so my equation stays balanced. So I eliminate it from the right side of my equation, and then I'm going to simplify it on the left. So I'm going to distribute this 4 into every term. So I get 4x plus 20 equals x squared plus 3x minus 10. And then I'm going to move all the terms to one side. So I'm going to subtract 4x and subtract 20 from the left. What I do to the left? minus 4x minus 20 I need to do on the right. So I'm left with 0 on the left, and then I'm going to simplify this on the right. So x squared minus x minus 30. And now we're going to factor two numbers that multiply to negative 30 that add to negative 1. Those numbers are negative 6 and positive 5. So x minus 6 times x plus Five. And now we're going to solve this. And to solve it, I'm going to set each of these factors equal to zero, and I'm going to solve for x. So x equals, when I do that, I get negative five and positive six. And we're going to check for extraneous solutions. Remember, extraneous solutions are any number that would create a zero in the denominator. So if I were to plug in negative five, in for x in the denominator, negative 5 plus 5 is 0, which makes this an extraneous solution. Okay, remember, you cannot divide by 0. You can't have 0 in the denominator. That does not exist. So this right here is an extraneous solution. It would make the denominator equal to 0. Let's write that down. So you have it in your notes. It would make the denominator equal to 0, which means your solution is just x equals 6. Let's move on to problem number 3. Problem number 3 says g of x equals x squared minus 5x plus 13 over x plus 1. And we're asked to find x if f of x equals 1. So, oh, that should say g of x. If g of x equals 1, so I'm going to replace g of x with 1, and I'm going to rewrite this expression on the right. So what's my first step? My first step is to eliminate the expression, in, or the, uh, yes, uh, the binomial in the denominator, sorry. So I'm going to multiply times x plus 1. What I do to the right, I need to do to the left. That eliminates it from the right, and I'm left with just x plus 1 equals x squared minus 5x plus 13. And what do I do at this point? I'm going to subtract x and subtract 1. What I do to the left, I need to do to the right. So now I'm left with 0 equals x squared minus 6x plus 12. So two numbers that multiply to 12, positive 12, which means they're the same sign, and we're going to add to negative 6. Can you think of any of those numbers? 6 and 2, 4 and 3, 12 and 1. Nope, there's no numbers that multiply to 12 and add to negative 6. So this is not factorable. So let's check the discriminant because the discriminant would tell us the number of solutions, if you recall that from your quadratics unit. So we're going to use the discriminant to determine the number of solutions. So let's write that down. Use the discriminant to determine the number of solutions. Okay, I'm going to change colors here. So remember the discriminant is b squared 
minus 4ac. It's that part of the quadratic formula that's underneath the radical. So b squared minus 4ac. So this is what I'm given. b is negative 6. So we're going to square negative 6 minus 4 times a, which is 1, times c, which is 12. Remember, this is a, this is b, and this is c. So b squared minus 4ac. So negative 6 squared is 36, minus 4 times 1 times 12 is 48. 36 minus 48 is negative 12. So what does that mean if you have a negative in your, as your discriminant? It means there's no solution. When your discriminant is negative, there is no real solution. So let's write that down so you know how to, you can have this in your notes. So the discriminant is negative. So there are no real solutions. What does that mean? It means that the graph, whoa, does not have a y value of one. And that concludes your notes over day one, solving rational equations. I hope it was helpful.